Hello and welcome to the show. So, a little while ago, JSR Devon, another Forza YouTuber, I'm sure plenty of you will know, and much better driver than I, came to me challenging us to a relay race on Forza 7. We were both to create two teams, and while in terms of straight up driver skill, we would perhaps expect Devon's teams to be stronger than us. Relay races are about more than just outright pace. There is quite a lot of tactics involved in them, not just in the order you set up your cars to run, but also in what vehicles you use, because this is going to be a PI-based relay race. PI is Forza's rating for the cars. It takes into all of their uh, various performance aspects, and at the end of it, you get a number. There were going to be four teams, each featuring four cars, and your team had 2,500 PI to spend on their vehicles. There were a couple of rules. Uh, all cars had to be road vehicles. Uh, we weren't going to be allowing race cars, and you couldn't have a car higher than R class. Uh, this is the, We've done many relay races. This was the best way of balancing things out. So yeah, you had 2,500 PI to spend on your vehicles. Now, my teams, the orange and black team, we both went for quite a similar, quite aggressive strategy. We had one low class car. We had our team had a, uh, an E-class car, black team had a D-class car, uh, which was going to be very slow. However, it meant for orange team, we had three S-class cars running the Mercedes, the Donkavor, and I was in the Celine S7, whereas Devon's teams were playing it a little bit more safe. Yes, they had an S-class car, and technically the fastest car there in the Mercedes. However, they also had an A-class Mustang, a B-class Viper, and a C-class Subaru. So, while they would be able to pull a large lead over our E-class cars, we would get faster. Uh, now, also, the order you run your cars in is important. You don't want your cars ever running in traffic if you can help it, because, you know, they'll fight each other, they'll slow each other down. You've really got to try and make the most out of the vehicles that you have. So, it's, it's, an, interesting, it's an interesting setup. A lot of tactics go <laughs> into, into one of these. Um, as, as you can see, we've got very, very different cars. Uh, spread between them. Uh, for our black team, they were running a D-Class Commodore, they had an A-Class Camaro and two S-Class cars. The way a relay race works, each car completes a lap. Once they get, when well, the first car completes a lap, once it gets to the line, it passes over to the next vehicle, they complete a lap, and so on and so forth, until it is the battle of the final cars uh, running on their last lap. So, yeah, there's a lot of different things. A lot of different things go on in these. Our first race, and we would head to the Silverstone Jeep Heat Circuit. Different strategies going on with this lot. Green team were sending out their fastest car first, the Mercedes CLK. Pink team were sending out their slowest car in the form of the Subaru, while both black and orange team, we were sending out our slowest cars, but they were you know, significantly slower. It's a C-Class Subaru against a D-Class Holden against an E-Class CRX. Now, this kind of works out for all of the teams at this moment in time. Green, well, they can run away at the front. They're not going to have any trouble. The Mercedes can run as fast as it possibly can on its lap, but green team are going to get slower as the race goes on. Pink team are, uh, you know, running their slow car. Again, they're going to be running it in clean air. It's unlikely to really be challenged by the Commodore. The Commodore's job is to try and stay as close as it can to Pink Team. And likewise, for our CRX down in E-Class, it's got a fair, you know, PI disadvantage on that Holden, but it just needs to stay as close. They won't be tripping over one another, though. You see, everyone could go for similar strategies, but everybody sends out the same car at the start. They'll all race each other, or if, if we all had the same cars at the start, you'll race each other, you trip over each other, and you actually lose a little bit of time. So you want to kind of have a, a, bit, of a, a bit of a mixed strategy. Mercedes, as we said, <laughs> was at the front and absolutely buggering off. The CLKs are very, very quick cars indeed. It was building up a massive lead. Of course, this relies on building up that huge margin early on and being far enough away. Being far enough away that when, you know, we unleash our S-Class cars later on, we won't have enough time to make up the gap. So sure enough, didn't take long for the Mercedes to come hurtling around and that would hand over to the Subaru. So Green were going from their fastest car to their slowest car. Now the Subaru shouldn't be challenged in this lap. Again, it's still being set off, it's still being launched in the in the relatively, in, the, well, in completely clean air, and if we catch up to the Subaru by the end of second lap, Green Team are in a lot of trouble because they've still got to be in an A-class car to go. So yeah, they're kind of, in terms of almost like a video at this stage, 
They're kind of a long way out in front, and we don't really worry about them much, because it's all going to go down on the final lap for them. Uh, Pink Team, likewise, it's kept the Subaru, as you would expect, a fair way clear of the <laughs> squabbling Foul Race teams. That would unleash the Viper for them, so that was their B-Class car going. There goes Black Team with the Holden, and our Mercedes would be unleashed. Now, in the inter-fail race battle, we knew our strategies in terms of against Devon's teams, the way this first race was running, uh, at a we were going to be fighting them on probably the final lap because they were using faster cars um, early on. It was going to be a slower vehicles later. It was going to come down to the battle on the final lap whether we could catch those cars later on. For, for this section, we needed our Mercedes to beat the Camaro. The Camaro was in... A-Class is a good A-Class car. The Mercedes is a fairly low S-Class car. Uh, however, the two remaining S-Class, or the two S-Class cars that Black Team had were both faster than the respective cars that we had on Orange Team. Not by much, but they were faster. So we were hoping to get the Mercedes past the Camaro without too much trouble. Of course, while they are different classes, Black Team can still cause us issues here. The Camaro tries to defend and the end runs out of a little bit of grip. Uh, well, yes, you know, one is an S-Class, one's an A-Class. All it takes is a couple of corners. If the Camaro could have stayed in front of the Mercedes, for a couple of corners, slowing that car down, you know, making it a bit difficult to overtake. That can cost us, you know, valuable time. Uh, certainly valuable time in terms of chasing after some of the other teams. Green team, still off doing their own thing. The Subaru coming around the final corner with, you know, not too much in the in the way of concerns. It's just hot lapping at this stage for them. They need to, I mean, it's still important what they're doing with the cars. You can't go slowly. In this because they need to build up their gap. They're setting off the A-Class Hot Wheels Mustang next. Again, it's a fast, it's a fast car. There's a lot of grip in these things. But yeah, you can't go slowly. Well, it's in some cases when you're out miles out in front, it's actually a little bit more difficult because you haven't got anything to chase. Uh, it's, sometimes it is easier. It is easier being the one further back with a bit of chasing. It's a little wide as well from the Hot Wheels Mustang going into the second corner. And now for us. Further back, in the midst of all of the mayhem, uh, our orange car was catching up to Pink Team, catching up to the B-Class Viper. Now, we knew that Pink still had, they still had an A-Class and an S-Class car to run, and their S-Class car was very, very fast. If we could get the Mercedes past the Viper, which we do down the straight again, not really costing either of us any time. You can overtake a lower-class car down the straight. It's very, very helpful. And in some ways, if you are in a much lower-class car, you don't almost want to waste too much time defending. It's, yeah, you can defend really heavily. You'll slow down the other team, but you also run the risk of, of course, slowing yourself down kind of end up costing you both a little bit in all of this. Either way, Mercedes, that got passed without too many issues. Didn't slow down, didn't slow us down, didn't slow Pink down, and that would hand over. So we were now up to second place with our orange team. We would hand over to the Adonkavort in second. Pink would cross the line, not that far behind. They would unleash their CLK, while Black team would hand over to, I think it was their Corvette that was setting off. So, we were, we were, again, not really worrying about green massively at this particular point in time. For, for us, we wanted the Donkervort to stay out ahead of the Mercedes for as long as possible. If it could slow down the Mercedes for a couple of corners, that would be good. Yeah, we had a faster car coming at the end. It was going to be S-Class cars up against uh, the Hot Wheels Mustang. But any time the Donkervort could essentially cost the Mercedes around here. That is what we were going for. Problem was, Mercedes was very quick. Mercedes was very quick, and the Donkervort just couldn't quite stop it in time, <laughs> losing the back end. Uh, not, you know, didn't lose much time in that particular one for the Donkervort. Just couldn't quite get it slowed down. Mercedes uh, scythes up the inside, would get the overtake, and can now run away fairly, I say fairly uncontested for the rest of the lap. So yeah, we didn't really cost the pink team as much as we would like to, but we also didn't lose too much. At the front, green team had handed over for the final the final swap. Pink had caught through the remainder of the lap and left the Donkervort a little bit behind. I would get uh, released as we set off. Black team had caught up a little bit towards the end of the lap as well with the Corvette. The Corvette is faster than the Donkervort uh, around this circuit. So the real question was, were green team going to be far enough away from not just pink team? Because, of course, there's an A-class Mustang chasing down a B-class Viper. There were, there were then two S-class cars hunting them. The Silly and an ACR Viper. And that's a menacing sight to have in the rearview mirror. Because, well, the Viper 
at the front, the older Viper, that has nothing it can defend against. It's sometimes, you know, you've got some A-class cars that maybe with some acceleration, maybe with some very, very aggressive defending in the, fi you know, in the final corner, maybe you could get away with it. But a B-class car against, well, potentially S-class cars, that's always going to be difficult. And as the, <laughs> as the lap progressed, we were getting ever closer. It was a case of who was going to catch who first. Devon was driving the pink team's Mustang. That was catching to the Viper, but the S-Class cars were coming. The Celine was there as we leave Magazine and Beckett's. The Viper had joined as well. The Viper so very fast through some of the corners. We head down the back straight. The Celine was past the Viper. That would get past Devon's Mustang as well. It was now a case of trying to get past green teams. Their Viper goes very defensive down here. That makes me have to go the long way around in the Celine, which we do make work. The Viper, the black team's ACR Viper, that sweeped past the uh, classic Viper as well. Now, I'm having to defend into the final quarter. We have a nudge from the Mustangers. That's a big dive on the green team's car. Now it's the, the black ACR Vipers to the inside. All four of us are in a group as we head around the final corner, but the Celine has not got the acceleration. It will be black team that win it with the Viper. I take second with the Celine. Pink take third with the Mustang. In the end, green team fell to last in that one in what is the closest relay race we've ever had. Certainly between four teams, that was the closest relay race we've ever had. Uh, this is the finish in slow-mo, if you like. It all came down to the final corners, which is the sign of a good relay race at the end of the at the end of the day. Slightly annoyed we couldn't win it with Celine. Uh, <laughs> it's not much between those two. And uh, yeah, pink team just narrowly beating out their green team's Viper. So, on to the second race. And well, both of our teams were happy with our strategy. Green team, also fairly happy with the strategy of send the Mercedes out first, build a big lead, uh, but gradually get slower uh, later on. Pink team were trying a slightly different strategy. They were sending out their Mustang at the start. And again, Everybody's first choice of vehicles were running in, you know, relatively clean air. I mean, we could have tried mixing up our strategies with our cars. Uh, we could have sent out one of our, you know, our S-Class cars or so on. Uh, but we didn't really slow each other down all that much running the E-Class cars. It kind of made sense to, to almost not have us fighting each other too, too much early on. Uh, certainly we knew we wouldn't be able to keep up with the Mercedes that was once again buggering off at the front. Uh, in this one, the CRX, much preferring the Nürburgring GP circuit in the Holden, was having a little bit of a tough time. The Commodore had not really managed to shake the E-Class car, <laughs> which is, well, that's bad news. That is bad news for Black Team, because they're relying on the Holden being far enough away from that CRX when they release their Camaro. Back at the front in a very, well, the same strategy, going for green team and a similar story. They hand over with a massive lead. The Subaru sets off and has just got to go as fast as possible. In the background, you can see pink team uh, catching up and they will be releasing uh, their next vehicle. For our foul race teams, the CRX, as I said, was very close and the Commodore made a mistake going <laughs> through the chicane, just runs too wide on the exit out across the grass. And this is now bad news for Black Team, in that their technically faster car is now a little bit behind and it gets worse around the final corner. The Commodore desperately trying to make up some time actually ends up understeering wide. And that's a mountain to climb. Like a little mistake in, in real races, especially on the first one. That's, uh, yeah, that's a lot of work now for the remaining black cars to be doing. Because the last time at Silverstone we saw the Camaro was being hunted by the Mercedes. We needed to get the Mercedes past the Camaro. And now, well, the Mercedes starts off with a fairly decent size lead, a fairly decent size gap over that Camaro. So, yeah, black team were in a bit of bother here. We were looking fairly good. But once again, we were a long way back. We had a lot of hunting to be trying to do. Uh, for this sort of portion of the race, this phase of the race, uh, not much was really happening. Pink team were catching a little bit back up to green team, of course. B-Class Viper chased out a C-Class car. You could just about make out the Subaru in the distance by the chicane. But no one's really close on track. And with us having swapped places, well, with our initially having overtaken, uh, there was, yeah, pretty much no overtaking on, on that particular phase. So... We come to hand over for the third lap of the race. Green team still have a fairly nice, tasty lead in all of this one. Pink team, oh, well, they're both sending out their Subarus, I think it was, for this. Oh, no, they're sending out the, sorry, the Mustang and, and the Subaru. So green team uh, still handing over. And you can see the size of the gap here. We still sat waiting. However, <laughs> however, it's two S-Class cars to come for, for us here. Donkervoort 
has got a lot of work to do, as does, let's face it, the black team cars have got a lot of work to do to try and catch up. Now, we needed the Donkervort to catch and pass the pink team car. We know we needed to do that. The Viper was going to be a problem for, <laughs> for me to deal with in the Selene. I had to chase it down. However, pink team were going to be finishing with their fastest car, which meant we had to pass. We needed I, I needed as much of a gap to that Mercedes. If we we're going to beat them, as much of a gap to that Mercedes as we could possibly get. So it was on the Donkervort to go hunting and find a way past the Subaru. And hunting, it uh, it did do. In the end, the Subaru, under a, bit, under a bit of pressure, just too fast. Just too fast. Up the S's, ran wide. Put a wheel in the sticky uh, gravel trap and that would slow and lose the Subaru quite a lot of time in all of that. So now Pink Team were perhaps in a little bit of bother. Pink Team were in a little bit of trouble in this one. Of course, the Donkervort was never going to be getting close to catching up to that Mustang up at the front that was still, you know, had a, had a fairly large lead over the pack. I don't, yeah, you can't even see, you can't even see the Donkervort in the background, but Green Team needs that. Green Team, again, let's keep saying, Green Team needed that very, very big lead because they're going to be handing over to the Viper and once more. The B-Class car would have to deal with it. Three, three S-Class cars were going to be hunting it down. Realistically, the fight was between me and Green Team. Pink's uh, falling back with the Subaru had cost them too much time. Black Team mistake on the opening lap uh, had cost them too much time. Uh, and they would not be able to really hunt down my Celine, let alone go chasing after the Viper. So it was really a case of could I find a way to catch up to a B-Class Viper. They had a big lead, but of course I have one hell of a car. When it came to the uh, handover further back, Pink Team would hand over in third place. It was close. Black Team had almost caught up to their Subaru. However, for us, well, it was going to be <laughs> unless there was a mistake from the from the CLK. Uh, the Corvette could try. We had a little bit of a look through the first quarter. The Corvette never really likely to be able to live with that Mercedes. As I said, the mistakes early on uh, were, were would be the, the the costly factor in this one. It's what happens. It's what happens with relay races. Uh, it's very easy to do when you're on that uh, on that first lap with the car. And yeah, Black Team were were kind of in, kind of in trouble. Now, as we came towards the end of the lap, this is where things were going to get rather close. The Viper actually still didn't quite have the Celine in shot. But that was what they needed to do, because the Celine was going to be very fast down these roads. The Viper's a quick car, do not get me wrong. However, <laughs> however, uh, it is no match for the S7 as we head up towards the chicane. And it's just about now you start to see the lights in the distance, and the Viper runs very, very deep in the braking zone. That is not what the Viper uh, wanted to do through there. Not quite out onto the grass mine, but still very deep. And ever closer heads the Celine and now towards the final quarter it's very much a clear image in the rearview mirror not just a pair of headlights down the straight out of the final quarter the Viper's still got a big lead the Celine though is going to be rapidly catching that towards the finish line however it is not going to be enough the Viper would take the victory not by much but the Viper would get it my Celine we would have to settle for another second place in that one in the end pink team would put out a bit of a gap over the black team is kind of expected on that final run pink team would get third while black team would end up in fourth so our final round and there would be again slight changes in strategy from uh, from the uh, from the Devon teams <laughs> guys happy to run with the cars in the order they were having seen the success of running the CLK first pink team then decided to run their CLK first as well while it had worked at Nürburgring, they were going to run into a little trouble. <laughs> this is the issue with running, well, in this case, of course, the same car, but the issue with potentially running cars in the same class is while you get a spectacular race, no doubt, you end up costing yourself perhaps some time. As we head to, <laughs> to the S's here at Cota, the green Mercedes is just a little wide on the way in. As soon as you start being wide through one of these, you end up kind of compromising your line for the next two or three corners. The pink car is there looking for a way past but is not quite able to use, you know, all of the speed. Green team having to defend. You take a slightly wonky line in the background. I mean, it's a long way back already. You see <laughs> our two uh, black and orange cars, but we are fighting one another. It's actually a very good pass from the from the pink Mercedes to get to the lead. Green car might have been a little bit of a butt sniff involved through there. <laughs> not quite sure. Tries to get the run on the exit onto this very long back straight. Couldn't quite make it work. And yeah how much time was lost through those opening sections and now do you have to go defensive if the pink car has to defend down here maybe you lose a little bit more time we're only talking fractions of seconds here however well, we saw what happened in the first race 
<laughs> we saw what happened in the second race even. Fraction of seconds can make a very big difference here in, in the relay races. And still, the CLKs fight. No, no options there at the end of the long straight. Going to the horrible section, as I like to call it. I'm not a fan of Kota myself. I, well, I say I'm not a fan of it. I don't have a problem. I'm just terrible at driving the circuit is probably a better way to put it. Uh, this turn that, well, I say nobody knows. Uh, most of us didn't know. Devon's drivers probably know better. Uh, we kind of make up some guesswork. And, you know, while they're busy fighting, there's no sign at all of our CRX and our Holdens. We're a long, long way in the distance, minding our own business. It's now a final couple of corners. The green car has a big look up on the inside. It's too shallow or aligned. They can't really carry all that much speed through there. The final turn, and the pink car is going to start going a little bit defensive, not ultra, ultra aggressive defensive on the way in. The green car's not really got anywhere to go, though. It's out wide on the exit. So, with equal cars on the first lap, pink team, they would hand over with a very, very small margin. The Mustang doesn't actually get off the line particularly well, it turns out. Green Team does actually launch the Viper slightly better. Uh, however, this is where their strategies diverge a little bit. Pink would send uh, Devon in the Mustang. Out next, the Green Viper would... Uh, actually, it's kind of fighting fairly well. Fighting fairly well through the first couple of corners. Sure, it's, it's never going to... It's never going to stay with it, uh, but then they'll end up having to swap next time around, and theoretically, they'll have a very close finish between the pair of them. For us, well, we were back to uh, similar similar strategies. We, we would have well, slightly changed up from Black Team. They were sending out their Corvette, uh, this time racing up against the Mercedes. Similar PI between these cars, about three or four PI difference uh, between them. So unlikely to see much change between us, unless there is a mistake. You know, unless the Corvette makes a mistake, unless the Mercedes makes a mistake. Unlikely to see much change in the gap in this one. Uh, but that's also good news in terms of we're not likely to fight one another. You know, much as you saw with the CLKs, we aren't going to be slowing each other down too much in, in all of this, which is what we were counting on, really. As we come to the end of this second lap, Pink Team would be sending out their Viper, whose job was... Well, job, basically the job of the Viper here was to come across the line as close or in front of the Mustang as possible. Theoretically, they've all run the same cars, so <laughs> theoretically, they would have—they want their Subarus launching at the same time, or you want to be launching as as either ahead or you know as, as close as you can to each other. Uh, it wasn't the largest of gaps, though, for the pink team's Viper to try and hold on to as they head into the S's. For us, we're still a long way back, but of course, we were going to be getting faster and faster, and at the end. Well, Pink and Green Team were <laughs> running with C-Class Subaru, sorry. We hand over uh, with some sneaky push-starting attempts. It's, we don't actually think it's all that effective, it just looks quite comical. Uh, <laughs> you saw the <laughs> Viper did it, so I gave the Donkavort a shove off of the line. Black Team were sending out their A-Class car, the Camaro, for this round. We were needing the Donkavort to chase it down, basically. Uh, I knew if my Celine was to beat the Viper, Especially at this sort of track, uh, we needed to be as far ahead of the Viper as we could be. So it was kind of on the Donkavort to go and chase down the Camaro. Yeah, the Donkavort's a, a lowish S-Class car, uh, so it should stand a chance of uh, getting towards that A-Class Camaro. In the battle at the, uh, at the front, and a long way at the front, the Mustang had made short work of chasing down the Viper as it came onto the back straight. In fact, the Mustang was right there. Now, it could have caught the Viper in a lot worse place as it is neither team really lost all that much time. The Mustang just simply faster, can out-accelerate. Uh, overtakes on the straights are ideal, pretty much. Overtakes down a long straight when you've got the faster car ideal. You don't lose any time at all when it gets to the corners. For example, if the Mustang had caught the Viper in these next couple of corners and the Viper was defensive, the, the, Viper, the Viper fought, sorry, uh, for position. I think the Viper actually went a little bit wide in that braking zone. Um, you know, for these couple of turns, it's easy to lose half a second again half a second, second, maybe in a couple of seconds, the Viper defends very well. Uh, for us, it wasn't quite as straightforward. The Camaro actually higher top speed than the Donkavort. Perhaps unsurprising, of course, Donkavort, that uh, a track-based monster. Again, though, no real massive time lost for us. There's a big braking zone at the end of the straight. Camaro runs a little bit wide in all of that, and the Donkavort can get past without, yeah, without losing any time. Camaro loses perhaps a little bit of time uh, running out wide, uh, but... Yeah, it was good news. It was good news for our orange team, basically. It was good news for our orange team. The Donkavort was passed and able to make gap through this sort of final sector and hand over 
well, giving us as bigger a chance as possible. Because uh, up at the front, green team were coming around to release their final car. The Subarus, the Battle of the Subarus, would get underway. It was a, quite a nice gap for green team. It was going to be very, very difficult for those pink cars to really stand much of a chance in all of this. Barring, of course, mistakes. It's all very well handing over with a massive gap, but mistakes can creep in around here, especially if you're an unfamiliar car, unfamiliar track, etc. Uh, so, yeah, you definitely you definitely never give up, but it's a lot of ground for identical cars to, uh, to have to try and make up. Now, for us... Well, we would hand over with a nice lead in in the orange team. The Celine would be giving chase to those Subarus, while the Viper would be giving chase to me and to the Subarus. It was very difficult for us to kind of measure. We didn't really know, because we were kind of racing around at the back for, for all of this. You didn't really know, know if we were going to be close enough or not. had no idea. We just knew we had to drive these cars as hard as we could. Uh, well, Viper was very good through these S's. I struggled a little bit with the <laughs> my lack of track knowledge and my lack of S-Class knowledge. I didn't really drive this. I, I was kind of cautious with the Selene. I was desperately trying not to throw it all away. And uh, yeah, the Viper was incredibly fast through the S's. You can see the, the gap that uh, I was handed handed over in didn't take long for the Viper to start reeling me in uh, through the S's, although I did still have uh, a little bit of a margin. Pink team, well, they are in trouble, especially when it came to the back straight. Look behind, and there is an angry Celine chasing it down. I thought about having a big dive at the end of the straight. I couldn't quite get it done. Again, this is where, while it's still a C-Class car, it still costs me a little bit of time. Sure, we'll add accelerate it, but uh, there was just a slight bit of uh, hesitation from me in <laughs> getting the pass done. Either way, we were clear of one of the Subarus. The Viper, that was chasing, and that would make short work, of course, of that Subaru. Subaru as well. Unfortunately for Pink Team, that was their strategy gone and out of the window. The question was, we could see that green Subaru. Could the Celine, could the Viper chase it down through this long, seemingly never-ending, many apexes corner? The Viper was catching me, and I started to get a little bit worried about the the ACR as well. Two more turns to go. There's a bit of a lockup from the Viper. We needed to be close enough to that Subaru. We knew we'd have the straight line speed. We could accelerate it into the final turn. We go, we get a little bit of a rub from the Viper. The ACRs come from nowhere. Fires it up the inside. It's now drag race to the line. The Subaru gets double teamed by us. Unfortunately for me, <laughs> it would be the ACR again that sneaks it. It sneaks it on the final couple of corners. I just didn't drive the Celine well enough. I'm, a little, I'm annoyed with myself on the final one. Uh, <laughs> should have been a bit braver in those final couple of corners, really. We get... We get a 1-2, though. We did uh, We did get a 1-2 in, in that one. This was a lot of fun. This was an awful, awful lot of fun. Um, the relay races are, are excellent. We've had some incredibly close finishes. I mean, that final race, that, that final race, it was on the start-finish line that the Celine and Viper uh, team worked the Subaru. The first race was, as I said, quite possibly the closest relay race we have ever done. Nürburgring, a couple of mistakes, split the field up a little bit in that one. Still a very close finish, though. And, yeah, we, we got we got the victories. Um, whether it be the two Faro's teams against the two Devon teams, we got 2-1. Uh, if we were to do points, uh, it would be it would be a tie between... Whichever point system we do, pretty much, it would be a tie between us for constantly getting second and black team got two firsts, but also a last in that one, and they'd win it on a tiebreaker, be a <laughs> virtue of winning. Uh, so, yeah, I think we had a successful time. We had a successful time. Well, Devon may well... They, they, they did, we'll all happily admit, they had the driver advantage on us. We did have the sneaky tactical advantage. We knew a little bit more what we were doing, having done these a few times. Our car choice worked very, very well, and... Yeah, we played we played the strategies we played the strategies uh, nicely in that one. As I said, these are great fun. These are great fun to do. Maybe we'll do some more of them in the future. Uh, that though is going to be it for this video. Well, thank you all very much for watching. Of course, a big thank you to Devon uh, for taking part. There will be a link to his video from this event uh, in the description of this particular video if you want to go and hear his thoughts on the matter. However, until next time, a uh, goodbye.